Lots of people ask me, hey, Christina, am I an empath? Or, or maybe I'm a sensitive person or, or, or a highly sensitive person or an HSP or, or, or I don't know, or maybe I'm just plain weird. Is that possible? Yes, it is entirely possible that you're just weird, but chances are if you clicked on this video, you probably are an empath. And in this video, we're going to get to the bottom of it once and for all. I'm going to share the top 16 signs of an empath so you're very clear on whether you are one or not and how you can better live with this superpower. Coming up. Hello, beautiful soul. This is Christina Lopes, the heart alchemist here to help you open your heart, heal your past and live with purpose. If you're new to my videos, click on that subscribe button and also on the bell. So you get notified as soon as I publish new content. Now I get asked a lot about what an empath is and how a person can find out if they're an empath or not. And that's what this video is going to be about. I'm going to give you a quick definition of what an empath is. I've discussed this in other videos, but I'll reinforce it here. And I'm also going to share with you the top 16 signs of an empath. So, you know, right away, if you are one and get this, some of these signs aren't discussed anywhere else and they may surprise you. So stick around. Once you finish watching this video, let me know in the comments below how many of the signs that I discussed in this video do you currently have? Let me know in the comments below. Okay. On to part one. And that is what's an empath. I'm not going to go too deep into the definition of an empath because I went deep here in this video here. It's going to be popping up. I'm also going to leave a link in the description box below. And I went deep into the definition of what an empath means in that video, but just for the purposes of this video. And, and if this is the first time you're watching me, an empath is basically a person who is very gifted at detecting, reading and processing information or energy. <laughs> okay. So that's my definition of an empath. So empaths are basically, they have a very sensitive energy system. That's very good at detecting and processing energy around them. All right. That's what an empath is a pretty simple definition of an empath. Now to part two, the top 16 signs of an empath. <laughs> now, before I get into the signs of an empath, I want to leave a side note, ding, ding side note here. <laughs> and the side note is that of all of these signs that I'm going to share with you, some of them are found what I call foundational signs, meaning that they're signs that are going to be present throughout your life, no matter how much you train or work with being an empath or develop your empathic abilities. But there are also other signs that I call temporary because they can disappear or diminish significantly once you come into your power as an empath. All right. So I'm going to divide them so that we're very clear and you know, which ones are foundational and which ones are kind of temporary signs. And the reason that I want to do it this way is because there's so much information out there about what it means, um, about being an empath, what it means to be an empath. And a lot of the information is disempowering. So a lot of the signs that are being shared as general characteristics, characteristics of empaths. To me, some of them are temporary. They are only signs that occur when the empath doesn't know they're an empath or when they're in their, when they're in a disempowered state, meaning they don't fully know what their power is of an empath. And so they can seem a little weaker or more fragile when they are in a disempowered state. Okay. So I just wanted to leave this side note here. I'm going to divide the signs into temporary ones and foundational ones just to make this easier for you to understand. So first I want to talk about the foundational signs of being an empath. So these are the signs that are going to stick with you throughout life, even if you come into your full power. All right. And so these first few ones are going to be the foundational signs. The first sign of an empath is that you can take on the emotions and even thoughts of the people around you. <laughs> and this, you know, this can be a really jarring sign, especially when we don't know where empaths before we start training our empathic abilities. This can be really jarring because what happens is when that empath, because that empath is super sensitive to the energy around them, they can very quickly take on emotions, feelings, and thoughts from other people without even realizing it. And this can be really jarring and actually traumatizing for, for empaths before they realize they're empaths, because what ends up happening is when you, when you notice that you're doing this, 
especially before you know you're an empath and before you come into your power, you may end up just running away from social situations and running away from people <laughs> because you feel like you're being assaulted by other people's emotions and thoughts and feelings. All right. It feels like you're being contaminated and you have no control over, over those, those emotions and those feelings and that energy that's coming on top of you. All right. So that's sign number one is that you can take on emotions, feelings, and thoughts <laughs> from other people. And the reason that I emphasize the word can, I've explained this before, but it's, it's worth emphasizing again. The reason that I emphasize the word can is because once you understand that in, in your empathic abilities are a superpower, you also understand that you can accept emotions and take on emotions or feelings, or you cannot. <laughs> you don't have to accept them, all right? And so this is something that you're gonna learn with training and with experience, but I really wanna emphasize the word can, because in a lot of other videos and a lot of other materials about empaths, there's this understanding or there's this teaching that you just take on emotions and thoughts and all of that from other people and you have no control over it, and this is not true, okay? So that's the first sign you can take on emotions, feelings, and thoughts from other people. Sign number two is you feel physical symptoms from others. <laughs> now this one, oh boy, this one can be a really hard one for empaths to learn to work with because it's, it can be a bit traumatizing. And what this sign is, is literally not only can you take on emotions and feelings like I talked about in the previous sign, but empaths are so sensitive. They are such fine tuned machines that they can actually detect physical symptoms in other people. They can detect them in their own bodies. That's how sensitive we are. And I'll just give you an example of something that happened to me recently <laughs> to give you an illustration of how this works. So I was just walking around my everyday life you know everything was going great and then I had this horrible hip pain that I thought oh my god did I break something what the heck is wrong with my hip and it was just this excruciating pain and I didn't know what the heck was going on I breathed and I didn't you know I did come kind of like pull pulled some light into my body and just kind of relaxed a little bit a few hours later, my mom came home. I was staying with my mom and she came home and she had had this horrible problem in her hip that she had no idea what was happening to her. She had this excruciating problem in her hip and pelvis exactly in the same spot that I had experienced pain just hours before. <laughs> and so as soon as I knew that, I immediately knew what it was. I cleared the energy, cleared the energy from my hip and it was gone in an instant. <laughs> so you see, this is just to give you, and this happens to me all the time it happens to me with clients. When I'm working with clients, I will very frequently detect symptoms in myself that aren't mine, but it's coming from the client and I could detect them on my own body. This was really hard for me to learn how to work with because I would, I would go in a state of panic sometimes because I would think something was happening to me and it wasn't me. It was coming from the person that I was interacting with. All right. So this can be one of the hardest symptoms, actually one of the hardest signs for empaths to work through, especially when they don't know their empaths and they don't know what's going on. So this is very common and this is one of the foundational signs of being an empath. So you're going to, you're going to have to learn how to work with this one. Sign number three is that you have physical sensitivities. So because the body of the empath is such a fine tuned machine, I like to compare it sometimes to a Ferrari. <laughs> so when you have a Ferrari, you have this decked out Ferrari, you're not going to pull up to a gas station and put diesel fuel in this beautiful, amazing high tech Ferrari engine. You're going to put the highest grade gasoline, right? And so when you put the wrong fuel in this Ferrari, you're going to take this exquisite machine and you're just going to break it down. You're going to break the engine. And so I frequently use this image to kind of illustrate what it feels like to be in the body of an empath. The body of an empath is so exquisitely fine tuned to detect and process energy that it can actually become quite sensitive to environmental toxins, to problems with foods, foods food allergies. So empaths very frequently tell me that they have sensibilities with certain foods. Maybe they're allergic to certain foods. A lot of people are, you know, intolerant to gluten. They have a lot of food sensitivities. They have to be careful with what they eat. They can't eat a lot of junk because their body starts to break down. 
Um, I've had a lot of empaths who are um, very prone to inflammatory diseases like arthritis and fibromyalgias and things like that. So, you know, the body of the empath you have to remember is a very, very fine tuned, finessed machine. And when it's given the wrong fuels or when it's exposed to toxins or, or other things that other people may be able to withstand for a longer, for longer periods of time, the body of the empath doesn't sustain that very well. So, so this sign is very common. It happened to me also. So I had to learn very quickly what I could eat, what I I needed to eat, what I couldn't eat, what my body liked, what my body didn't like. I had to learn all of these things pretty quickly, especially as my empathic abilities increased after my spiritual awakening. Sign number four is that you're easily anxious or stressed out. And so this one is also something that you're going to have to learn how to work with because the system of the empath is so fine tuned, especially the nervous system of the empath is very fine tuned. And, and very open to, to processing that information in your external world, it's a gift, right? It's a superpower. I call, I call empathic abilities superpowers because they are. But what ends up happening is a lot of times empaths are more sensitive to anxiety and stress. They are for sure. What ends up happening is a lot of times stress that other people, non empaths can sometimes go years with stress on top of their shoulders and they don't burn out. It takes them years to burn out. Not so with the empath. When the empath experiences stress or anxiety, their bodies will begin to break down very quickly. So you have to be very good at detecting when you're stressed out, detecting when you're anxious and doing everything that you can in your everyday life to avoid stress, to stay nice and centered and grounded and at peace, no matter what's happening in your external environment. So the skill of learning how to live a stress-free life or learning how to work through the stresses of life, keeping yourself grounded and centered, this is going to be of utmost importance for you moving forward. But this is a common characteristic that empaths are more sensitive to anxiety and stress. And so you need to, you need to be more careful in your life. Um, when it comes to this, knowing that this is a sign of an empath. Sign number five is that you are sensitive to spirit. <laughs> this is a really cool sign. And, and basically, you know, that, that empathic ability that you have, that energy system that you have, that's open and very, very fine tuned to detect energy. That same energy system is also fine tuned to communicate with the spirit world. So empaths can very easily communicate with their guides, with spirit, with the universe. They receive synchronicities very easily. They can detect them right away. So the empath has this beautiful, easy ability to just communicate with spirit, especially when they learn to train their minds to quiet down. The empath can very easily communicate with spirit much more easily than a non empath, especially if they train their minds. Now, if they're all over the place with their minds, right? If your mind is going a thousand miles an hour, you may not notice that it's easy for you to talk to spirit. But once you calm your mind down, you'll notice right away the communication with spirit it comes very easily to you. Sign number six is that people are easily drawn to you. <laughs> this is really common and it's because the empath has this beautifully open system, really open energy, welcoming energy and other people, even non empaths, it doesn't matter. People can detect that openness, that, that energy system that sometimes is very healing to others without them noticing. And so you'll find yourself people being drawn to you. Sometimes they come to you just to hang out with you, just to have coffee, just to be with you. Other times they'll seek you out for advice. So if you're a person where your family and your friends and coworkers come to you for advice, it's likely because they've detected, they could feel in your energy system that it's more open, that it's the energy system of an empath. And so it's very common for people to be drawn to you. Sign number seven is that you're extremely sensitive to suffering. Okay. Now what do I mean by this one? <laughs> this one, this one's a painful one. 
and and it has to do with your sensitivities because you are so open because you're so sensitive the suffering of others it could be people or animals that that's very common too to be extremely sensitive to the suffering of animals but also to of other people you it, it the suffering of others and of animals they it just it hurts you it, it's that that's the best way that i can explain it when you see an animal in pain or when you see a person in pain it hurts you not just not just you feel bad for them not just you feel sad for them no no it goes way more than that an empath actually feels pain in their physical body when they're witnessing the suffering of others and the pain of others this is why a lot of times empaths can't really uh, watch, you know, extreme violence or things like that on TV because when someone else is being hurt, even fictionally, <laughs> it, it bothers them. All right. So this, this extreme sensitivity to suffering, it's just, it's hardwired in you. It's normal. And it's something that you're going to have to learn to work through. Sign number eight is that you can read people. <laughs> now, this is another little part of our superpowers of being an empath. People are very transparent to an empath. So someone can be standing in front of you and they could just be giving you the biggest BS on the face of the earth and they could be smiling and pretending everything's okay and just they could be BSing you all day long you're gonna see right through them. You can see right through BS. <laughs> so it's almost impossible to trick an empath because an empath, because we're so good at detecting energy, it doesn't matter what the person is saying from their mouth because we can detect the energy and we can know right away if that person is telling the truth or not. So we're very good, empaths are very good at reading other people. And this can sometimes present as a problem socially because what's interesting is that, you know, even though I said in a previous sign that people are drawn to empaths that's true but sometimes even though people are drawn to you they can also feel uncomfortable sometimes in your presence and it's precisely because of this because you're so good at reading people because people are totally transparent to you a person realizes this even if they are not spiritual even if they know nothing about what I'm talking about even if they know nothing about empaths they can still energetically detect that you can see right through them. And so even though they're drawn to you, when they come to you, they may feel uncomfortable in your presence because it's almost like they feel like they're naked in front of you. They can't conceal things from you. And so, if a person doesn't really want to be vulnerable, if they're wanting to hide or not share certain things with you, then it, it could be uncomfortable to be in the presence of an empath. And, it, and it's because of this, because empaths are really good at reading people. Okay, so those first eight signs that I just talked about, those were what I call the foundational signs. And now I'm gonna shift, I'm gonna continue the rest of the signs up to 16 are going to be what I call temporary signs. And these are signs that although they may be present when you're first an empath and you don't know you're an empath, you don't know how to work with your empathic abilities, or maybe you're in a disempowered state, these signs may seem normal to you at the time, but once you start working with your empathic abilities, these signs may disappear or they, they may diminish or they may disappear altogether, okay? So that's why I call these ones, these next ones, temporary signs. Sign number nine of being an empath is you hate conflict. <laughs> now, why? I mean, I think, I think we've gone through all the other signs. We pretty much can understand why empaths hate conflict. It's because the empath is so sensitive to the energy around them that if there's a chaotic, violent, a conflict type of energy, it's painful to the empath. So they really hate conflict and they avoid it most of the time. They'll try and avoid conflict as much as possible. And this can actually be a problem in their lives because when an empath avoids conflict, they may actually avoid situations where they need to stand up for themselves, for instance, where they need to defend themselves. They may not, they may just cower and walk away and not even want to deal with it because they don't like conflict. They hate it. So, this sign is very common, but again, I put it in the temporary signs bucket because as you come into your power and you start understanding who you are as an empath and you start to work on your energy and feel more and more powerful, you're not going to shy away as much from conflict. You still may not like conflict. I don't like conflict. Who does, right? Like nobody likes conflict. But when you're in your power, you learn that conflict sometimes is necessary. There can be constructive conflict. And you learn that a lot of times you may have to communicate something to someone else and that may be perceived as conflict 
but it may be necessary. So as you come into your power, again, here's one of the signs that'll start diminishing or disappearing altogether, where you may come to a point where you're like, if there needs to be conflict with another person, if you need to have some more, you know, harsher or altered communication with another person, or if you're in an argument, that's okay. It's a part of life and you can work with it. Sign number 10 is that you're uncomfortable in your body. <laughs> This sign was really hard for me to work through when I was training as an empath because what ends up happening, the reason that a lot of empaths are un feel uncomfortable in their own skin is because the empath, if you review and go back to your childhood, when, in, when empaths are children, they are so, so sensitive to energy and if they experience any kind of trauma or any kind of pain as a child, before they know what's happening to them, before they know how to work through things, they can very quickly dissociate from their own bodies. And, and it's because the, it, from inside their own head, right? The little brain of a child, from inside their head, they're feeling things from the outside environment and they, these things can be so painful, but they don't know how to explain them or give them meaning. And so what their little brain says is, ouch, this hurts. And so the little empath starts to associate their body with discomfort and they begin to dissociate from the body and they grow up then to feel extremely uncomfortable in their body. So if you feel awkward in your body, if you don't like to express yourself through dance or through movement, if you're embarrassed to move around, to move your body in front of other people, if you cover your body up a lot, these are all, these are some signs of, of what it feels like to be uncomfortable in your own skin. If you're uncomfortable with your sexuality or if you're uncomfortable when you make love to someone, I could keep going, but I think you, I think you understand there are multiple signs of, of feeling uncomfortable in our bodies. And this is why it's because you're an empath. And when you were a child growing up, you started to dissociate from your body because you associated discomfort with the body. All right. This is very common, but again, I put it in the bucket of temporary signs because as you heal as an empath, as you begin to heal and as you begin to come into your power, you have to come into your body. It's part of the training of the empath. You have to come into your body because it's your most exquisite tool in this life. And so as you heal and as you learn, how to work with your empathic abilities, you're going to become comfortable in your body and this sign is going to disappear. Sign number 11 is that you're uncomfortable in crowds or heavy energy. <laughs> And this is, this is super common. And it's, it's in fact, one of the reasons why empaths very frequently run away from social situations or don't like to be in social situations. It's because they feel assaulted by other people's energy. They, they feel assaulted by heavy energy. So if they go somewhere and the energy is really heavy, it starts to be very painful to them and they just bolt, you know, they're like, I'm going home. I'm out of, I'm out of here. Okay. So this is really common. And, and again, I, this is a temporary sign because this is, just a question of you being disempowered, unhealed really. Because when you heal as an empath, when you come into your power, you realize that you don't need to take on the energies of other people. And in fact, you can walk into a room and if the energy is heavy, if, if the emotions of other people that are kind of coming to you, if they're not very pleasant, you can literally stand on your own two feet very strongly and you can influence the energy of the room. You can change the energy of the room instead of letting the energy of the room change you. Okay. But again, this is another, this is another training, uh, aspect for the empath. And that's why I put this as a temporary sign. Sign number 12 is that you need a lot of alone time. <laughs> now, this one, even though I put it here in the temporary bucket, this one, it's true to a certain degree that throughout your life, even if you're an empowered empath, you're going to, you're going to want to have some alone time. But the difference and why I put this sign here in the temporary bucket is because initially when we don't know we're empaths or when we know we're empaths, but we're in this kind of victim consciousness, we very frequently will just keep running away from everything. And it's because we're running away from everything that we're spending so much time alone. Empaths who are unhealed and disempowered, they can actually live pretty reclusive lives, but it's because they're running away from life all the time because they can't deal with the energies. 
So when you come into your power and when you heal and you come fully into your power as an empath, you realize that you don't need to run away from anything anymore because if an energy is unpleasant, you're going to influence it and change it on the spot without needing to run away. But it still may be true that you're going to want to have some alone time. I love my alone time and it's really important in keeping my balance, but I'm alone a lot less than I used to be when I first started to discover that I was an empath and when I was still in a disempowered state and starting to heal. In, in, that, in that time in my life, I was basically a recluse. I lived for four years uh, as a hermit, basically. So that at that time, I wasn't ready. And so I didn't know who I was. I didn't know my power as an empath. And so I ended up kind of being alone a lot of a lot of my time, spending a lot of my time alone. And now, now not really. Now I, I enjoy to be with people. I go anywhere I want. I have no problem with energy. So that's why this is here in the temporary bucket, because although you're, you're still going to need your alone time, even though you're in, even when you get to the empowered empath uh, stage, you're still, you're not going to be a recluse anymore. You're not going to be running away from anything. So your alone time may be smaller than it was before. Sign number 13 is that you are easily hurt. <laughs> And, and this one, this, this can take a little while to train and to come out of, but the reason that empaths are very easily hurt is because of that sensitivity that empaths have. So what ends up happening is because we are so energetically sensitive to the vibes around us, we can very easily feel in our bodies pain. We can feel hurt very easily. And a lot of times, get this, this is something that's not talked about a lot, but I, I discovered this on my own and with working with so many clients. Many times, empaths can actually over-dramatize situations in their lives. <laughs> so we can end up feeling more hurt than the actual situation warrants. And it's because we're so sensitive, it's like we feel the world so much more intensely than when something happens to us or when someone says something to us, we may take it way beyond what the person actually meant. And so the, the, the empath, especially when they're disempowered, this is again, this is in the temporary bucket. So this is going to disappear when you train as an empath, but at disempowered empaths are very frequently hypersensitive to criticism. We have a lot of difficulties accepting criticism, even if it's constructive criticism, because we feel it immediately. So this is another sign that's temporary and you're going to get totally out of it. <laughs> when you, when you train as an empath, you're going to continue to be sensitive but you're going to learn how to understand and discern whether something warrants you feeling that big of an emotion or maybe whether you're exaggerating a little bit and then you're just going to bring yourself down back down into a state of homeostasis. So you're going to learn how to discern these things better. Sign number 14 is that you're sensitive to stimuli. <laughs> And this is, you know, this is very common being sensitive to stimuli. So empaths very frequently have a lot of problems with with loud sounds, with a lot of chaos, with uh, sometimes even with very bright colors, with, um, you know, with textures, busy textures. The empath sometimes has problems with busyness in their outer environment, whether it's in the form of sound. What I found that's most common, the most common sensitivity uh, in my experience for an empath is sound. So empaths are very sensitive to loud sounds. All right. Um, and this is common also, but again, I put this in the temporary bucket because as you train, as you understand what it means to be an empath, as you work with your superpower, your sensitivities, your hypersensitivities are going to diminish a little bit. They're going to quiet down because one of the reasons why you're so sensitive to stimuli to begin with is that you're not training as an empath. Maybe you don't even know you're an empath. And so your nervous system may be on overdrive. It may be, it may be overly excitable. And so it it's just going to take some work and some mindfulness and some energy, um, you know, spiritual practices to bring your nervous system down into a state of calm. And when you do that, your, your hypersensitivities to stimuli will decrease. They probably will never go away completely, but they'll, they'll decrease substantially where they don't bother you anymore. Sign number 15 is that you may be closed off or aloof. <laughs> 
Now this could be like it's this could seem like it's totally contradicting one of the other signs that I talked about before where I was saying that you know we're so, empaths are so open they're so sensitive to energy so if they're so open and they're so open uh, uh, sensitive to energy how can they be closed off this makes no sense it seems it seems counterintuitive but it, what's happening here is that when you are a child empath and if you experience any type of pain or childhood trauma what ends up happening is you learn to try you try you can never you're never really a hundred percent able to do this but you try to shut down your system as much as possible especially before you know how to work with your empathic abilities and so what ends up happening is you can actually close down your heart. You can shut down your heart in an attempt to prevent all of these energies, especially painful energies from reaching you. And so a lot of times the empath, when they're still wounded and they don't know how to work with their empathic abilities, they develop this characteristic of being closed off or aloof. It, it may, to other people, you may seem like you're completely aloof and closed off. And it seems like it's really weird, right? But this is very common. I remember in my own life, before my spiritual awakening and before I even knew I was an empath, I couldn't see people cry because if I saw someone cry, I would just walk the other way. I, I was completely awkward. I didn't know how to handle someone's pain. I didn't know how to handle someone being um, emotional in front of me. And and why? Because I was shutting it down. I was closing it off. And I wasn't closing it off because I'm a horrible person. I was closing it off or I was being more aloof because being witnessing other people's pain was very, very painful to me. And so I closed off, I shut down. And so to some people, I could actually appear as being cold. And so, so this is common, all right? And, and this is in the temporary bucket because again, once you come into your power and you heal and you know how to work with your empathic abilities, you'll never close down again because you'll realize that there's a reason that you're so beautifully open. And that reason is to help heal others also, to help witness other people's pain, to be with them when they need you. So, so this, is gonna, this is gonna disappear completely, but at the moment, right now, people may look at you and they may say, you know, you're kind of cold. You're kind of shut off you're emotionless all right so this may be a characteristic that you may be feeling right now and it can be a sign of you being an empath sign number 16 is that you're scared of intimate relationships <laughs> Oh boy, this one is very common and you can see why now, right? Like we've been going through all of these different signs. You can understand now why intimate relationships are so scary for an unhealed empath. It's, it's because that person, intimate relationships are the closest that other people get to you. And if you're an empath and you can feel this energy so, so acutely, well, the closer someone gets to you, the more you can feel. So the, the closer the relationship is, the scarier it can be for an unhealed empath. And so before an empath heals and comes into their power, intimate relationships, especially romantic relationships, can be super scary for them because those romantic relationships, they come very close to your heart. They come into your heart, actually. So an empath who's unhealed, they can feel like they're losing themselves in a relationship. So if you've ever felt like, oh my God, I can't do relationships because I feel like I lose myself in a relationship, Relationship, it's because you're an empath and and that that losing yourself what it really means is that your energy mingles very quickly with another person because your system is so open and sensitive to it your energy merges and mingles with another person's energy and that can cause your alarm systems to go off and you can just bolt <laughs> okay so this is very common and again I put it in the temporary bin because once you heal once you come into your power romantic relationships and intimate relationships won't be a problem for you anymore and you won't be afraid of them. You will thrive with intimate relationships. So now that we've gone through these 16 signs, you may be asking, you know, what's next? <laughs> How do I continue to develop my empathic abilities? I don't know where to go from here. <laughs> what do I do next? 
And so I'm going to leave you a playlist. It's going to pop up right here. It's a playlist that I have with videos specifically for empaths. So as soon as you finish watching this video, head over to that playlist. I'm going to leave a link in the description box below. Also head over to that playlist and that'll be your training. Your, you can start training as an empath with that, with that, um, that playlist. All right. So you have a lot, you have a lot of homework to do after this video. Now I want to hear from you. How many of these signs that I discussed in this video are you experiencing right now? Let me know in the comments below. And if you have a question for my weekly videos, leave them also in the comments with the hashtag AskChristina. Click here to subscribe to my channel or head over to my website to take my heart quiz and figure out if your heart's blocked. And don't forget to head over to this playlist here with content for empaths so you can learn how to thrive as an empowered empath. I love you, beautiful soul. I am out. <laughs>